What made Jesus' teaching different? He wasn't the only teacher pointing people toward faith in the God of Israel. There were many other teachers in his day, but most of his contemporaries found his teaching challenging or even threatening. Mark describes the issue as one of authority. Let's take a look. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. A new teaching with authority. But the teachers of the law, they scoffed at it. In fact, these teachers of the law are numbered with Jesus' opponents all throughout the Gospel of Mark. So, who were these cats? Their Greek moniker is Grammateus, which simply means scribe. These guys would have helped preserve and copy manuscripts of the Old Testament, reading them, studying them, and teaching them. It was a super important thing. Scribes had vibes. Jeremiah, the prophet, used his trusted scribe Baruch to record his words. The great post-exilic reformer, Ezra, was a scribe. So, you may be wondering, if scribes helped people keep their faith in God, what's Mark's deal here? I've got an idea to help. Let's scan Second Temple Judaism. That's the name for the Jewish thought world of Jesus' day. The Bible dictionaries are a great place to start. Erdman's Bible Dictionary says of scribes, the term begins to be more specifically associated with the transmission and interpretation of Torah. The scribers were Torah scholars who preserved and interpreted the law in order to maintain its centrality in Judaism after the exile in the diaspora. According to Erdman's Second Temple Judaism literature, describes scribes as both pious and influential, and that they were in a position of some authority and power. New Interpreter's Bible Dictionary observes that New Testament passages present scribes as questioning Jesus' actions and authority. Going on into our context, Mark 12, 30 through 40 describes scribes as those who walk around in long robes, expecting to be greeted in marketplaces and given good seats in synagogues and banquets. So the New Testament points out the high social status of scribes. So how does Mark describe these scribes they are power people who challenge Jesus' authority and whose teaching doesn't carry weight. These cats are privileged. Jesus' teaching authority is highlighted in the casting out of spiritual enemies, the forgiveness of sins, and the effectiveness of prayer. How would we sum this up? His teaching actually changes lives and moves people toward God. Remember how Mark wants us to read his gospel like an Exodus narrative? Well, one way of thinking of Jesus' teaching authority is that he actually has the power to defeat the oppressor, Satan, and spiritual personas called demons, and set people free from captivity to these spiritual powers. Just as the gods of Egypt were no match for Yahweh, the spiritual forces of captivity are no match for this authoritative teacher and deliverer. Over and over again, Jesus sets people free inviting them into the deliverance of a renewed relationship with God, with Him. But following Jesus requires something. It requires us to check our privilege at the cross and let Jesus be the King of our lives, the author of our exodus, the authority of our freedom. The scribes saw this authority as threat because they would lose face. They would have to admit that they are in need of deliverance, regardless of how well they knew God's words you would have to admit your captive before you need a new exodus and follow Jesus into the humbling wilderness of discipleship. Mark wants us to see Jesus' teaching as an invitation for those humble enough to admit that they may be captive to sin, to submit to the authority of Jesus to change lives through discipleship, like the guy who bursts into the synagogue and was freed. Can we humbly let Jesus have authority in our lives? It's the only way to freedom.